Welcome to another video. Today I'll be showing you Haska. This project was built to bring home assistant devices and entities into your Alexa ecosystem to allow Alexa to have control over them. The issue of Haska is it required you to have some basic understanding of Amazon Web Services, such as creating new IAM roles, spinning up Lambda functions, as well as providing the code for the function and linking your Alexa skill to it. With this GitHub project I've created and about to show you now, it takes away the need for all of this and is all automated by some script I've provided. Jumping straight into it, there's a few prerequisites. We need to first enable the Alexa integration on Home Assistant. We need a long-lived access token. We then need to create an account with Amazon Web Services and Alexa Developer Console, as well as create a new Alexa skill. So first, let's enable the Alexa API in Home Assistant. To do this, jump into your file editor of choice, go into the configuration.yaml and paste in the following code. As always, I'll have everything linked in the description in my GitHub repo. Next, we need to create a long-lived access token, which you can grab at the very bottom of the profile page. Once you create a new token, take a note of it for later. This will be the only time you get to view the access token. Moving over to Amazon Web Services, if you haven't already got an AWS account, you'll need to register for a new account. So head to this page and provide an email address and account name. After clicking verify email address, you'll receive an email containing an authorization code. Use this code and click verify again. Once your email is verified, enter a password and then confirm that password in the second box and hit continue. From here, it's just a case of following along with the information AWS will ask for. I've sped this up to save boring you, but it's just going to ask for information such as name, address and number. You're also going to need to have the credit or debit card against the account. Don't worry though, as everything included in this project will be utilising Amazon's free tier services, so you won't be charged anything. So eventually you'll reach this point. As mentioned, we only need services available in the free tier service. So ensure the basic support is selected, hit complete, and then go to the AWS Management Console. This will prompt you to log in, make sure root user is selected, and log in with the email address you verified earlier. Once the console is loaded up, the only thing we'll need to do is create an access key to enable the GitHub script to create the necessary resources later on. This will be done via the security credentials page. Once the page is loaded, you just need to scroll down until you see the access keys section. Click on create an access key and toggle the I understand prompt and then click create access key. This is the only time you'll be able to see the secret access key, so take note of it for use later on. Also, be sure to delete this key once we've finished running the script, you won't need it afterwards. Next, we need to head over to the Alexa Developer Console. I'll have this linked in the description. If you haven't already got an account, you can sign up using your normal Amazon login details. Once you've done that, come back to this page and click on Create Skill. Give your skill a name of your choice and choose your language in the drop-down menu below. Once you've done that, click Next. On this page, you'll need to toggle Smart Home as the type of experience. The following two options below this can be left as the default options. Click Next again. This will take you to the Review page. If you're happy that you've got everything done correctly, click on Create Skill. And all we need to take away from this page is the Skill ID. So copy this ready for the next step, which will be running the script. Jump over to my GitHub repo, here we'll be grabbing the Haska zip file. So click the green code button and hit download zip. Once that's downloaded, you can extract the file wherever you want on your PC. I've just placed it on my desktop. Open the Haska file. The first thing we need to do is change some of the variables in the Python file named constants. So right click on the file, hit edit, or you can open it in any text or code editor of your choice. From top to bottom then, what we need is the access key and secret key we created in AWS. For the region, if like me your skill uses the UK language, the AWS region needs to be EU West 1. For full details on region selection, you can look at the Haskell wiki page. Below region you need to provide the address to your home system instance. 
Note that this needs to be externally accessible to allow AWS to access it. You can check out my video on how to link your Home Assistant to a domain name using Cloudflare tunneling. Next we need Home Assistant's long-lived access token. This will allow AWS access onto our Home Assistant. And then finally we need a skill ID we got from Alexa's developer console after creating our Alexa skill. Once that's done, save and close the file. To actually run this script, if you have Python installed, feel free to run the main.py file as you normally would run a Python script, otherwise we can use the PowerShell script. This script will install Python and then run the main.py file. So to do this, right click and select run with PowerShell. This will open the PowerShell window. You'll be asked if you want to change the execution policy in order to download Python. Type the letter A and hit enter. The first resource this creates in AWS is the Lambda role. This gives the necessary execution permissions to run our Lambda function. Next, it will create the Lambda function itself in AWS, including all the Haskell code. This also includes a link between our Alexa skill and the connection between our Home Assistant and AWS. Copy the second AWS resource ID as we'll need it later. Now let's go back to the Alexa skill builder. In the default endpoint box, paste in the AWS resource ID you just copied and hit save. This will point our Alexa skill to where our Lambda function is held in AWS. Next on the left panel go to the account linking page. The contents of this section will be in the description of this video. You'll just need to swap out the top two URLs to match your own Home Assistant's URL. For the client ID, we can reference the redirect URLs at the bottom of this page. If you're using the Australia or Japan region, you'll need this top link. For the US region, use the middle link. If, like me, you're using the EU region, it's the bottom link. The client secret isn't used, but it needs an input, so just type in some random text. Keep the authentication scheme at basic. You'll need to add a scope. The scope needs to read smart underscore home. And once you're happy everything's correct, scroll back to the top of the page and hit save. Next, go to the permissions section and toggle on the send Alexa events section. Then copy your Alexa client ID and secret for use in Home Assistant. This next part in Home Assistant isn't necessary, however I would recommend this if you don't want to bombard your Alexa with every single Home Assistant device and entity. Paste in the YAML code from my description or GitHub. What this is doing is filtering out all the entities from showing in Alexa. From here we can then add exceptions for the devices and entities that we do want to see in Alexa. This is done within the Include Entity section. So here I'm just going to add a couple of lights to show in Alexa. In the description I'll include various locale and endpoint strings you'd use if you're not within the EU region. Then finally we need to paste in the Alexa client ID and secret we just copied from the Alexa Skill Builder page. Once you've finished that we just need to restart Home Assistant to refresh the configuration.yaml file. Once Home Assistant is reloaded we can head over to the Alexa app on our phone or tablet. On the bottom right, click on More and press Skills and Games. Press Skills and then scroll to the far right hand side where you'll see an option for Developer Skills. If everything has worked correctly, you should see your own Alexa skill listed here. Open it up and hit Enable to Use. This should open up the Home Assistant auth page. Just log in as you normally would do with your Home Assistant username and password. After logging in, give it a few seconds and you should see a message to say your skill has been successfully linked. Hit the Next button and Alexa will begin looking for devices, the devices being your Home Assistant devices and entities. So here it now says four new devices have been found. If I click this it will take me to my Smart Home Devices page. So if I open up all devices, I should now be able to see the two devices I included on my inclusion list. If I now open one of these devices, you can see I can interact with this light just as I would be able to with any other light on Alexa. That's it for this video, hopefully you find this helpful. If you did find this helpful, leave a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all my latest content.